Dein Gast am Mittag. Om Shanti. Peace to you. Peace to me. Hello and welcome to another video. Today I want to speak about karma. Karma. Karma simply means actions. So we live in a world where your actions have consequences. Some people completely ignore that and think they're running a life where they can do whatever they want. Especially the elites of this world seem to be able to do whatever they want. I can, many, I can mention many names and the people actually wanting to change the world for the good. Like John Lennon for instance, big hero of mine, Gandhi. Martin Luther King, all these amazing orators and speakers. They couldn't do what they wanted. They wanted peace. They wanted justice for all. They wanted freedom. And what happened to them? They all got shot. So where was the karma in that? What, why were their actions making them be shot? Very interesting question. So we live in a universe of cause and effect. Uh, if you look at uh, the elites again of, of this world, they believe that they can get other people to do their biddings and not, not suffer the karmic co consequences of their actions. Uh, to me that's completely deluded, but hey, that's how it is. So what is karma? Karma are like patterns of bondage with your likes and dislikes. It really does hold you in a position of not being free if you're in that bondage. If you're being held back. Oh, I like doing that, but I don't like doing that. It's, it is holding you back. For instance, there, there was a, a Buddhist monk I, I was listening to talk a little while ago. And he was saying you should find joy in everything that you do, i.e. even doing the washing up after you've eaten, cleaning the house, just find joy in that. And I was thinking, what is he talking about? You know, uh, joy going down the pub with my mates, having a drink, that's what they used to do. That was good, that was joyful, coming and cleaning the house, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. I am slowly beginning to understand that, that the cleansing process of cleaning or doing the chores of life, you, you, you're releasing bondage of thought, that thing, oh, I can't stand doing that. And actually the things that you feel that you don't like doing, it becomes easier for you to do them. Uh, you start to procrastinate less, because you think, well, I can leave that till tomorrow, because I don't really fancy doing that now. You can find the energy to get up and do that. You, you release yourself from the bondage of your likes and dislikes. So collapsing, collapsing karma it really is diminishing your likes and dislikes. And of course, that's part of being human and there's your natural instincts that also come in that you, you like safety, security, you like a little bit of control in your life. Some people like a lot of control, control freaks. But you can collapse that karma, collapse that so that the cause and effects of the universe doesn't Come back to you so much. What you put out there will come back, maybe not in this lifetime, maybe in another lifetime if you understand that whole reincarnation or how energy just circulates. So we are energy moving around and around and around and that never gets destroyed and this physical matter, the body, never actually gets destroyed, it goes around and around and around. So you've got those hermetic principles as, as above, so below, as within, so without. These things are moving around and around and around, never get destroyed. So there's that information of your karma, your actions, your bondage onto your likes and dislikes. You hold on to it unless you start to diminish it. So that means you're becoming into a, you're in a, an ex, a a state of acceptance. So if you go to that consciousness chart, acceptance is becoming a lot more up the consciousness scale to 
moving towards enlightenment. So you're accepting how your life is. Karma is just action, your actions. So how do you want to act in this world? How do you want to be as a human being? Do you want to be in bondage to your likes and dislikes? Do you want to be in bondage to the way that you live your life daily, that you do the same things every day because you don't like doing anything else? So releasing yourself from those bondages opens up many, many different opportunities. So things that you don't like. Me, personally, I really didn't like speaking to big groups of people when I was younger. I even, well, not younger, up, up to about six, seven years ago. I, I, I really hated it. And so my actions, my karma, would keep me away from that, keep me comfortable. So I decided I'm going to break this. I'm going to break this because it was it was excruciating when I was in a, in bad situations having to explain to everybody how I perceived something and how I wanted to put this across. But I did it. But I didn't do it to the best of my possibilities. I wasn't being the best human being that I could, and I wasn't explaining myself properly because of that bondage I had to. Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be around these people speaking in a big group. So I actually went out and did public speaking. I, I came, I, I went to a public speaking uh, course called Toastmasters. Uh, they've changed completely now compared to where I was with them. I met a lot of conspirators there who were looking into the world and trying to explain about the conspiracies in the world. And that, that was very interesting because it helped me to start to express myself in a better way. Still, much, much improvement. <laughs> I need so much improvement with this. But it's, it's enabled me to now go into a room of 70, 80 people and speak. I went into the Royal Society, I think a year or so ago, and spoke about the energy body breathing, meditation, to the care and quality commission staff and it was fascinating because I thought well it, it, these people are very ingrained into the NHS and I'm talking about holistic health and blowing my own trumpet I, think, I feel I did a really good job because I had many people coming up to me afterwards thinking well, I was going to speak a load of new age guff. I spoke about very simple, practical ways that you can use your time to bring yourself into the parasympathetic nervous state for you to rest, digest and repair very quickly so that you can actually come back as a human being in a more powerful way. And lots of people came up to me afterwards and actually congratulated me on the job that I did. I would have never, ever, ever dreamt of doing that years ago because I would have been in bondage to my calm, to my action. I would not want to put myself out like that. And then the thought of actually being in front of a room of strange people instructing the goal. Oh. <laughs> no way. No way. It, 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 I'd have gone red. I'd so self-conscious, oh, they're all looking at me. But now, since I've been doing, I, I, I did the public speaking, I became the president of the, of the public speaking club that I was at. No one could quite believe it who knew me. What, you're doing what? And I went and trained to become a uh, Qigong body and brain instructor. No one could quite believe that I, I did that either, which was amazing. And now I'm starting this YouTube channel up trying to just engage in thought and conversation for people to think about their lives a little bit more deeply think about the world they live in and how we can all collectively as a community change the world that we live in because my goodness me does it need changing
A karma, karma. Don't be caught up with your patterns of bondage, with your likes and your dislikes. Don't be caught up with it. Let yourself go, let yourself be free. Move yourself forward in the best way that you possibly can. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video. Sarang Hamida.